Hi, this is Dale McVeigh, and welcome to my channel, Not Too Shabby Chic. I was tagged by Pam Van E to um, do the Crafty Questions tag, and she tagged me and uh, some other folks, so I am um, getting you my answers. I've tried three times. I am uh, under the weather today. I don't know if it's allergies or I'm getting a cold, so... I got tired of sitting on the couch and decided to do this. So, the first question to answer is, what is your name? My name is Dale McVeigh. Middle name uh, was Renee at birth. I took my maiden name as my middle name, Dale Starling McVeigh. Um, and how did I come up with my YouTube name? I like to do a play with words, if you will, with things. And um, I thought of the term, not, that's not too shabby. And then, of course, in style now is shabby chic, and my style is not really shabby chic, but kind of a combination uh, of several things. So, so my style is really eclectic. I like grungy a lot, very vintagey a lot, um, but I also like boho. I like shabby chic, so I guess it's grungy, shabby, vintage. So I came up with the name using not too shabby because my style is not too shabby, but a little. Um, and I named it that at first, but there were a lot of people with that name, and they came up before me on searches, and some of those names were YouTube channels that I didn't want people to confuse with mine. I'll just leave it at that. So I added chic on the end of it, not too shabby chic. Um, so that's how I came up with the name. Um, the next question is, what is my favorite craft? Um, it started out as mixed media and I still love doing mixed media I just am not doing it as much solely and it evolved into junk journaling and all the elements involved with that so I can use elements of the junk journaling with the mixed media so it's kind of marrying two worlds into one so um, those are my favorite crafts favorite place to shop for crafts everywhere anywhere whether it's at a thrift store um, whether it's at um, a not-for-profit place like Smart Art or Turnip Green Reuse and Recycle, I guess those are my two favorites locally, or someone's home, or work, or begging people on the street. I don't have, I have no shame. I ask for things all the time, whether it's paper bags, old books, um, your clothing. It, you'd just be amazed. I had a girl at work bring me um, a couple of uh, dresses that were her daughter's, and she's from India, so... They were Indian type uh, fabrics, which I absolutely love. I had a guy at work that I spoke with who brought me some very old books that I'm just absolutely in love with and blessed that I got them. So just know that you have not because you ask not. When you see people, just ask. You never know. They've got things they're just going to throw away. Don't, don't give it a second thought. But if you tell them you could use it, Hey, you might get some stuff and get some real treasures at that. One man's junk is another man's treasure. So um, I have no shame. Uh, top favorite crafty YouTube channels. I have more than five. Um, and, and basically, if I watch your videos, you're one of my favorites. Um, so I guess the top ones are... Uh, Carol Tenson with Crafty Emporium. She has great tutorials. I love her sense of humor. <laughs> she kind of reminds me of myself sometimes, although she's got a really cool accent, and I don't. Bonnie and Clyde, uh, I love her too. She uh, does a lot of great tutorials as well, and she does not buy craft, craft things. She uses recycled things, things from her home, old clothing, thrift store things, and she does amazing work. So... She's a good resource to learn how to use what you have. Uh, Sean Petit is an amazing uh, mixed media artist who also dabbles in journaling, probably more than I'm aware of. She does more art journaling, and her, her work's amazing. So she became my favorite mixed media artist. So everything I learned in mixed media, um, I, I gleaned mostly from her just because I love her style. It's very grungy, and you hear me say, Oh, that is full of grungy goodness. Well, I stole that, plagiarized that from Sean Petit. She also tells everyone that you are loved. And her mission in life is to, as an artist, is to use that gift to encourage other people 
to let them know they are loved, to give them confidence, and to operate in life in spite of fear because she she deals with that and and it's just a wonderful encouraging site not only do you get mixed media free uh, lessons if you will but you get life lessons that she gives good advice and stories and all of her art is based on an experience she had that week and she she kind of builds around that so I would encourage you to check her out G Kerr G I is her first name and K-E-R-R. -R. I don't know how you're supposed to pronounce it, but I love her website. She does tutorials all the time. They're short, to the point, and simple things, but they're gorgeous. And she goes through them very, very succinctly and in a way that um, everybody can do it. And I watch her all the time. Dreams Etc. is one that I ran into uh, more recently. And she gave me a lot of ideas on page layering. One page can, can end up being a condo, can be a, a high-rise apartment, uh, the way she does it, and it's really cool. Joyful Michelle is newer. Uh, she and I kind of kindled a relationship and a friendship. Uh, she does uh, a lot of different things. She shows you her craft room. She, she shows you um, things she's in progress doing and shares just a lot of different things, and she's got a... Um, a neat site, so look, check her out. Junie Desiree, uh, J U N I D E S I R E E. She is a young woman in Australia and she loves to write. She has a Facebook page by the same name, but she refers to it as Willow Bound Journals. That is going to be like her, um, I don't know, her business. She wants, she sells journals. Her journals are more simple and, and plain because she likes them that way to write. She encourages people to actually write and has a lot of challenges and things to get people to actually put their thoughts onto paper and write. She does a lot of faith-based things with interpreting scripture, not from a theological standpoint. Someone will give a scripture on her Facebook page and she'll do a spread on it and tell them what she got out of it. And everyone's encouraged to post what they got out of theirs. Um, so it's really nice. She gives to charity. She gives to some of her members uh, monthly to help them towards a dream that they're working towards. And she shares her dreams and what she's working towards. And um, she's amazing. She's inspired me to um, know that you can make a difference one person at a time. Pam Van E is another great website. She does great tutorials, great work. I love her work. She and I have become fast friends over the internet. And um, I, I think a lot of her, and also I Am Scrappin' Happy by uh, Julie San Miguel. And she and I, uh, are, she was one of my first friends that were God encounters, if you will. And she, we have a kindred spirit. We have a God connection that could have only happened, but as could only have happened because God orchestrated it. And I will do a separate video to kind of tell about that if with something that she gifted to me. She's got a big heart and um, she does beautiful work and is a wonderful person. And uh, so check her channel out. If I can figure out how to link people, I'll do that, but I, I haven't really figured that out yet. So anyway, that was a long one, but I couldn't narrow it too much. And there are many more. Gail Agostinelli, um, Shabby Duda, Treasure Books, um, Nick the Booksmith, oh my word, just I could go on for days. My favorite color, everything. Um, I do have a bent towards turquoise, and I love brown because I can ink everything up and make it grungy with brown. So, but I really love all colors, even though you might not be able to tell that when you look at my stuff because it tends to be very brown and beige <laughs> because that's grungy and I love it. Um, so my favorite craft tools, um, oh my, I have a lot of tools that I like, but um, I guess some of my favorites are tear rulers, and I will show you, I bought a set of these, I think you got four to a set for either $10 or $15, I don't remember, and each one has a different um, edge, so you can get all kinds of different edges and you might say well you can just tear it or cut it with scissors you can but can I tell you 
you get one of these bad boys going and you can rip for days and, and get do a lot of damage in a short period of time. I use this edge more often because it's a lighter tear. So you can really get jagged and really get going with some of these others. Then I went to um, one of my uh, not-for-profit places, the Turnip Green, and found this in the children's section. And I guess everybody thought it was just a little old ruler where you can draw little shapes. Well, being the crafty person that I have learned to be, I noticed these little edges. So this is a tear ruler I basically got for free because the turnip green, you get a bunch of stuff or whatever you want, and you pay whatever you want. It's just by donation. Um, so you can see those edges. There's two different tears, and this is the one I use the most because it's smaller. And so you can find things like this if you're really looking in places that will surprise you. Um, there's people making them now on YouTube. I've seen um, them do that. Uh, Gina B. discovered how to do it, and I have seen a previous person doing it already, and they just took a plastic ruler, a pair of long no uh, needle-nosed uh, pliers, and you just snip the edges a little at a time, and you can make your own, so you don't even really have to buy one. And I went on and on about that, didn't I? Sewing machine. I never liked to sew, but I love sewing paper. I love sewing tags and pages, and um, I love sewing snippets and stuff like that. So the sewing machine has fast become a friend. Uh, my paper trimmer, because I cannot cut a straight line. If you've ever tried to cut your bangs back in the day, or had your mother try to cut your bangs because they were in your eyes, and she just wanted to trim them just a little bit, and she starts trimming, and you're, you're kind of going like that. You're not going straight. So instead of like this, your bangs are going like that. And then before you know it, you have bangs that are like that long. <laughs> and so that's kind of how me trimming a straight line is. I start out with a wide piece of paper, and by the time I'm done, my piece of paper is like that. So I love paper trimmers because I can cut straight lines very quickly. Another one of my favorite tools are scissors. Um, good scissors, bad scissors, doesn't matter. But I need really good scissors to cut fabrics and to do some of the other cutting that I do. So I have all three pairs of the Tim Holtz scissors that I got with um, coupons. Um, he has big, medium, small. And they all cut well unless you abuse them. And I've kind of almost abused these because I love the size. I like the larger hand grips because I have arthritic arthritic fingers and so this is easier to hold but a good pair of scissors will take you a long way um, and make your life so much easier and your work looks so much better for fussy cutting you know these are awesome and then I have an even smaller pair um, that are we are memory keepers little scissors little bitty scissors and so for fussy cutting these two are my faves um, so can't do without scissors, or I can't. Some people might can tear. With my tear rulers, I can do a lot better, but not with fussy cutting. Um, paper punches. You got the, the hearts and the squares, and you got the corner rounders, and you got the uh, corner fanciers, and you got, you got any shape your heart desires, any size your heart desires that save you so much time to layer and make things. Flower punches and what have you. I love them all. So those are awesome tools, and I love... Uh, my cropper dial. I have the handheld one was my first one um, because I didn't know about the bigger one. I was going to show it to you, but it appears it's stuck. Oh, there it is. So here's my handheld one. You can make two different sizes of holes, and then you can also set your eyelets right here, and there's different settings. Um, but it the reach is not very far. So when you want to reach across a page, you really need the granddaddy crocodile. That's that bad boy. I love it. Um, you can you have a longer reach. You can size it by moving this little ruler thing, so you you know can get an even thing. This adjusts for your hole sizes here and here, and then your eyelet setting, and it'll do the grommet and eyelet there but mainly for the long reach, and it's easier. I can stand up and really punch that puppy. And I have two of them, actually, because I broke one, and I bought another one, and then I saw a good deal and got another one. But that's so that if um, I feel led, I'd give it away, because I have done that before. So 
so that's that. Um, where does my love for crafting come from? It is in my soul. I came out of the womb with crafting in my bones. That's all I know. When, from the time I was a tiny child, I loved reading books. I loved coloring. Um, I colored from as early as I can remember and loved it. I colored and grew an adult with my children. They would get tired and run off playing, and I would still be coloring. I would shade and do all kinds of things. So I always loved being crafty, painting, uh, coloring, color pencils, markers, crayons. In the 80s, I got into the uh, 80s country art and kind of did my own thing and cut out my own stuff with the wood wood things and painted them, had my own designs. And then I was a cross-stitch fiend. I did a lot of that and sold it, um, crochet. And then just in the last three years, I started doing acrylic painting, or actually the last five years, I started out with making jewelry, uh, recreating jewelry, and then moved into doing some felt little dolls and animals, and I called them um, like the tooth fairy dolls, and I would make a little pocket in them so that you could put the tooth in the pocket and have the little monster or little cute doll that you could hang on the door on the end of their bed, and the, your child could put their tooth in there, and you didn't have to ruffle up under the pillow um, they were labors of love never sold one because I, again i'm slow at everything i do but i made all of my grandkids one um, and then i moved into the acrylic painting from there into mixed media and then discovered junk journaling so i know that's very long-winded and more info than you care to know um, and when did i start crafting two or three years old when i started coloring is what i think I started making things, and I love to just make things, so I was always making up something or making something. I think full-fledged crafting probably started in the 80s when I did country crafting because I sold everything I made to one store, and she, I, I ended up doing it like an assembly line of you know, 20 of this color and 20 of that color and 20 of that color of the same thing. It was mass production. Um, my favorite crafts so far have been woodwork, uh, crocheting, doing the felting. I love, you know, the Zentangle stuff and the adult coloring books. But right now, mixed media and journaling and all the embellishments and elements in between that make that up are are my favorite because they kind of incorporate all the other arts that I've I've done. So that is a little about me. Thank you um, for listening. And Pam, I bet you are wondering why in the world you picked me. So I am going to tag Julie San Miguel, I'm Scrappin' Happy, you're next, as well as Michelle Gregory, Joyful Michelle. So tag your it to answer the crafty questions, and I will try to copy them and get them to you, but you guys have a blessed day. 